my name is Madison Snyder. I teach fourth grade at Bonnie Kate Elementary. I'm so excited that you have decided to join us today to do some reading, talking, and writing. We miss you guys. Um, we hope you guys are staying healthy and well. Um, but again, I'm so glad that you decided to join us today. We're going to be talking about some mysteries and puzzles as we're reading today. Um, and you may or may not have read this in class before, but it's totally okay if you have. Um, because we can always reread text to gather new information and to become stronger, more fluent readers. So, are you ready to read with me today? We're going to be looking at um, a text called, uh, or a text around mysteries and puzzles. But before we do that, let's take a second to really understand what our job is today. Um, if you're willing to help me, I would love your help to solve this mystery. You know, someone who solves a mystery, they can be called a detective or they can be called a sleuth. A sleuth can also be a bloodhound, that, you know, that type of dog. They work together to solve a mystery. These bloodhounds are used for tracking clues. So we're going to make up a compound word and you guys are going to be junior sleuth hounds today. How cool is that? Um, so... If you want to be the junior sleuth hound, join me. So here's a little letter to you. It says, Dear Junior Sleuth Hound, Mysteries are all around. There could be a mystery on your playground. There could be a mystery in a far away land. There could be mysteries between the pages of this book. So what do you do to solve a mystery? Become a sleuth hound. Look for clues. Ask interesting questions, then put all the pieces together and prove your answers. This book gives you a chance to practice skills that sleuths use. As you read this book, use the super sleuth steps to find answers to some really big questions. Good luck! So let's take a second though. There are some really awesome pictures around, um, around this text. What do you notice? That's right, I see a camera, a set of keys, a flashlight, a compass, and a pencil. All these things can help us be super sleuths and solve this mystery. Maybe the camera, we can gather pictures of things that we need, or these will unlock the secrets that this text has. We can highlight information with our flashlight, and this will point us in the right direction um, having a compass. Well, we really should focus on four things when we're looking um, to become a sleuth hound. First, we need to look for clues, ask questions, make our case, and prove it. So first, when we look for clues, we want to look back through the text and pictures and ask, what do these tell us? Then we want to write or draw what we've learned. It'll definitely help us remember. Then we want to look for important ideas and try to put clues together. Also a good super sleuth asks questions. We want to ask really great questions. We want to be curious and we want to find out more. And next we need to make our case. Now this isn't like a suitcase, but this is a case that we can gather information and build and support our ideas. So we want to convince people with our information. So we've got to look at the clues and summarize what we know. We want to use what we learn and already know to think of our own ideas and we want to tell what we think. Oops, lastly we want to prove it. We have to show what we've learned, we have to work with others, and we want to share our adventure. All of those things will help us be a super sleuth. We are looking specifically, like I said, at mysteries and puzzles. What are some mysteries and puzzles that you have encountered so far this year? Ooh, I wonder, ooh, think about social studies. We had the lost colony of Roanoke that we studied earlier in social studies. That's a mystery that we still haven't solved. Maybe someone thought of Amelia Earhart and what happened to her? Maybe some of you guys thought literally a puzzle. I'm not very good at puzzles like that, but I can solve some puzzles 
when I read. So we're going to look for um, clues about some cool mysteries and uh, we again here are these super sleuth tips that we have gathering evidence, asking questions, making our case, and proving what we know. So we've got a cool text today. Um, the title of the text is here, Don't Believe What You See. Interesting. Aren't we told to believe what we see? Hmm. Then a good reader always kind of uh, looks at how the author has set up the information and what graphic sources the author has given us. I see several pictures here. But the author doesn't have any, any um, headings or, or anything like that. So we've just got all of our information set up and organized in paragraphs. So we're thinking about mysteries and puzzles today. So I want us to read this first paragraph together, and we're going to figure out what the mystery in this text is. Read with me. Have you ever felt like your eyes were playing tricks on you? you might have been experiencing an optical illusion. Optical illusions trick us into thinking that we are seeing something different than what is actually there for us to see. Optical illusions occur because our brain perceives an image in a particular way. Based on what we just read together, what is an optical illusion? That's right. Optical illusions are things that trick us into thinking that what we are seeing is something different than it's actually there for us to see. Now, I like to call myself a word nerd because I love looking at words. I want to look specifically at the words optical and illusion. The word optical here, this word has to do, um, its root means vision, so it has to do with our eyes. And the word illusion literally means to mock in its Latin version. So an optical illusion is literally where they're mocking our eyes. They're tricking our eyes. <sighs> I've seen optical illusions around, have you? Well. Let's take, a uh, let's take a look at these next two paragraphs and find out some optical illusions that we might see in nature. Take a minute to go ahead and read these next two paragraphs. Okay, what were the three optical illusions that we might find in nature? That's right, mirage, a lion blending, or a bug that looks like a stick. Well, let's reread the second paragraph here to use our text evidence to explain what a mirage is. Good job. I like this sentence and I hope you use this in your explanation. This happens because the heat from the road is rising and light from the sun hits it in a way that makes our eyes think there's water ahead. There's where our eyes are getting tricked again. We know that the, the heat rises, the sun hits it in a certain way, is there some picture evidence to support what we just read? Exactly! This first picture here gives us that example of what that mirage looks like. It really does look like there's water on the road in that picture. Good job! Now in the next paragraph, 
there was another nature optical illusion. What was that? Right, the lion and the stick. Did the author provide any picture evidence for us? Yes, we have the lion resting here and blending into the grass. And then we have the stick bug looking like a stick. It's a very creative name, guys. So when we have the, these two things, we can use a really good um, scientific vocabulary to describe what these two, um, this animal and this insect are doing. Does anyone know that scientific term? That's right, camouflage. There are two types of camouflage. The lion is doing one, blending, and then the stick bug is doing another one called mimicry. You may remember that from science class earlier in the year. Well, now that we've seen some nature or some natural optical illusions, well, are there any human-made optical illusions? Let's read the next two paragraphs to see if there are any human-made optical illusions. Go ahead and read. Great job. So what's another name for human-made illusions? That's right, brain teasers. What does the text say a brain teaser is? Good job. They're created to show different things at different times. Did the author provide us an example Excellent. Yes, this picture. I don't know about you, but I saw the word you first when I first saw this one. I saw it in the light blue here. Y O U. Some of you guys may have seen the other word first, though. If you looked at the red, you could see the word me. Those are so much fun. There are tons of them out there if you are really interested in these brain teasers. The author ended this text with this sentence. Keep your eyes open, but remember that you can't always believe what you see. Why would the author end this text with that statement? That's a thinker. But I think maybe, hopefully, you talked about how we can make brain teasers and we can also be tricked with our eyes by things in nature. So we shouldn't always believe what we think we see. We need to make sure we're really stopping and thinking. It are the eyes playing tricks on us. Well, there's some things that you can do with this text. We've got gather evidence ask questions, and make your case. Let's look at gather evidence first. You can go back and reread this text. You can read it to somebody in your house, uh, a sibling or an adult in your house, or even a pet. I know that um, there's, some, there's some critters outside, like the, those ladybugs that like to hang out outside of my house. I may even read to those guys. But you can reread this text with someone and you can write three details that tell about optical illusions in nature. Um, for asking questions, again you can read this to somebody, read it to yourself. I want you to write two questions that you have about optical illusions for which you could research answers. Maybe you you ask an adult if you if they could help you research maybe some other examples of optical illusions in nature. Are mirages and camouflage the only ones? Or maybe what are some other animals that use camouflage? 
And you don't have to write these. You can just talk about them with, with someone in your house. And then finally, you can make your case. There's an expression that says, seeing is believing. Do you think it is true more often than it is not true? You can write a paragraph telling your opinion. You can try to change someone's mind. Maybe you have like a little bit of an, uh, of an opinion where you like argue your opinion and someone else has the different opinion. You guys try to change each other's minds. Um, or you can talk to somebody. I have, there's so many things you can do with this. I personally would love to research more about optical illusions in nature and maybe find some fun brain teasers to show my family. Well, you guys have done an incredible job today being Junior Sleuth Hounds. Thank you so much for joining me and hanging out with me as we learn together about optical illusions. Hopefully you learned something about mysteries and puzzles today, and I'm so thankful that you spent this time with me. And again, my name is Madison Sider, and I'm so thankful that we got to hang out together. Have a great day!